high five to soil. You have finally earned your place in the Environmental Hall of Fame up there alongside water and air. And that's because it's finally recognised and given the respect it deserves for the importance that it has in mitigating climate change and also in the grand cycle of life. So well done, soil. Great to see you here. And soil health is absolutely key. It's as important now as it's ever been, but finally it's recognised for this. When we talk about soil health, it's actually very difficult to define. So far, no one's really done a particularly good job. A lot of scientists are out there scratching their heads, trying to come up with definitions. But what we do know is it relates to soil life. And this is where I'm going to concentrate today. Now, historically, there has been a statement or phrase associated with soil quality and soil life. And it's something like this. There are as many organisms in a teaspoon of soil as there are people on earth. So in this video, I want to explore that question and find out is it actually true? And if it's not true, has it ever been true? If it was true, when did it actually become inaccurate? So let's get stuck straight into it and explore today. Is it true that there, there are as many organisms in a teaspoon of soil as there are people on earth? Now, in order to try and answer or validate this question, I had to do a whole heap of research. That involved looking at some reference books that have been using over the years. It meant scouring the internet, different websites from different organisations all over the planet, and also looking at scientific papers. So having scoured the internet, looked at journals and papers, as well as kind of hardback books, things like that, the outcome or the conclusion that I came to was that there is quite a big variation in what people say. The academic institutes tended to focus on the mass rather than comparing it to a volume such as on a teaspoon and also they gave a clearly defined count. Now I'm going to interject on my interjection here just to say that I think what was clear was that where certain people, organisations were trying to sell the importance of soil, they were trying to make the analogy a lot cooler rather than sticking to hard numbers like many of the academic institutes. But that's okay because at the end of this, if you stay tuned, I'm going to give you a new cool statement or point of reference that you can use that brings this whole question way up into the 2022s. In order to validate this statement, I thought it would be best to break it down into its component parts and look at each bit, just so that we're clear we're on the same page using the same terms of reference when we're trying to answer the question. So let's just bring the statement up and have a quick look at those component parts. Here it is, and what we can see, the first of these is teaspoon, a teaspoon of healthy soil. So let's just talk spoons for a minute. Spoons are absolutely amazing, great for eating soup, great for having your cereal in the morning, but we're actually talking about teaspoons. So anyone who drinks tea and has sugar or milk in their coffee will know the types of spoons that we're on around here. But Teaspoons come in all shapes and sizes, and wherever you are in the world, they are classified in different units of measure. Now, in order to kind of work out the standard that we're going to use here, I had a quick look at our old friend Wikipedia. So let's see what Wikipedia said. What it actually highlights straight off is that it's probably a good idea to reference teaspoons in respect to cooking and pharmaceutical industries. These are kind of recognised standards, especially cooking. So it seems that the US and Canada have very similar sized teaspoons and we could probably settle on approximately the same value, which is given as five millilitres or five cubic centimetres. 
An Australian teaspoon, however, seems to be quite a bit smaller. Not quite sure why that is. I know you guys down under like your Vegemite, but maybe it's to do with not having a little bit too much yeast so as to blow your mind. Anyway, um, maybe I'm wrong with this. If there's any Australians in the audience that could let me know if the unit of measure is different to 3.7 uh, millilitres or 3.7 cubic centimetres, that would be great. So being biased, we're going to go with 5 millilitres or 5 cubic centimetres here and use that to relate the volume or mass of soil. So now that we have our defined teaspoon, 5 millilitres, 5 cubic centimetres, it's time to talk about soil. And the statement says a teaspoon of healthy soil. What is healthy soil? I'm not going to get into all the complexities of it. I've already said at the start of the video that it's a very difficult question to answer. So what I'm going to do here is to use a particular situation, that's to say uh, as untouched a soil as we can hope to achieve and use that as our kind of baseline for a healthy soil. So for the purposes of this a healthy soil will probably end up being something like a tree soil or ancient woodland even. So what we're going to do is head off to the lab now and I'm going to pull through our records for tests that we've done because I'd like to validate this with my own data set. So let's go to the lab now. So I went to the laboratory, I had a chat with the guys there so that we could decide on a scenario that would best represent a healthy soil, one that we had data on and we could present in this validation exercise. And as predicted earlier, we settled on some tree soils, actually to be precise, some woodland, untouched woodland soils. And so I searched our data set for the records that would match this. I pulled up some reports, I printed them off, and then I got the data ready for review. Now this brings me to the third part of the statement, organisms and what we mean by this. Well, because of the order of magnitude of things in life, bacteria are a single cell organism and there's likely to be more of them in soil than any other organism. So if their numbers aren't in the billions, then it's unlikely that even if we add up all the other organisms that are present from any scale bigger than a bacteria, it's unlikely that they're going to topple a number that matches at least uh, the current population on the planet. So for the purposes of this, we're just going to focus on bacteria numbers and see where that gets us. If we need to review it later, we will. We'll start adding in things like fungi or protozoa, nematodes, earthworms, etc. But let's get back to what I did. And then I started running some calculations. I took an average of these reports to base my calculations on. And I also used a particular standard in terms of the weight of an individual bacterium. Um, and that's because the numbers that we generate in our reports are based on mass and we would need to convert those mass figures into numbers. And then I ran the calculations, which um, I won't go into exactly what I did, uh, but it ended up with a load of big numbers that, quite frankly, at that time of day, I couldn't really be bothered to pump into a scientific calculator. So I did what any rational person would do. What is 0 0.002655 divided by 10 to the minus 12? 0 0.002655 divided by 1. 1000000000000000 is 2.65500000 times 10 to the 9. Or basically 2.655 billion. So there is your answer. Quite disappointing, really. I couldn't validate this. Uh, the numbers, no matter how I cooked it, didn't come out anywhere near the 7.9 or 8 billion people equivalent that we're aiming for. Certainly it's not true at the moment, although that said, 
I could actually see it being achieved with certain soils. It's just that we haven't looked at those soils in my laboratory, uh, but that's not to say that others around the world haven't. In fact, I do remember reading within some of the uh, statements that have been made that people had looked at soil in the Amazon. And I would imagine not only is there greater diversity of species uh, in the microbial populations in a soil like that, but the numbers are probably absolutely astronomical anyway, far more so than the soil that we tested today. However, I did say that there were a few parts to this question. If the statement is not correct as far as I can see at the moment, has it ever been true? So to do that, let's have a little look back at how the population has grown on the planet and we'll see if we can fit in our 2.6 billion. We'll see where they fit as well. So here we go. If we look at this graph I've taken from our world in data, it plots the population of the planet over the years. And when we overlay our data on top of that, we can see that when we look at the bacteria alone, the two coincide, let's say, somewhere between 1950 and 1970. So yeah, quite some time ago. Now I'm not a scientist, so suffice to say, I'm gonna caveat everything I've shown you, my fag packet maths, rough calculations, I could have done a far more robust data analysis, a bit like they would do in academia. And so I would kind of leave this exercise to those in academia to truly answer that question. But what this exercise has taught me is you have to be very careful about the statements you use and more importantly, find out for yourself if something is true or not. There's no harm in going over what has been done and what others say works. But I did tell you that I was gonna give you an up-to-date analogy, a new phrase that you could use to replace this old hat teaspoon uh, analogy that has been peddled for many years. So here it is. A mug full of soil contains more organisms than there are observable stars in the night sky. So there we go, everybody. Controversial, Meh, maybe a little bit. Fun, yeah, I really enjoyed doing it. It was a bit of a journey, it was quite an epic video. I thought this was gonna be a five, six minute and it turned out to be sort of over 10 minutes. Anyway, I hope you managed to kind of follow the thread. I hope it was interesting. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. And as always, follow the channel because there's more varied videos showing you how to do stuff with your soil uh, to help you grow better plants and crops. So until the next video, I will see you soon.